My name is Jesse, and this is my wife, Natalie, and this is our story. We've been married eight years now, eight years this month, and then about four years ago, we decided to have children, walk through that journey, take the next step. And so we decided to bring a child into this world. Everything was easy, it was quick. We got pregnant within a month. We were excited to announce everything went well. Doctor visits went well. Gave birth to a beautiful, healthy baby boy, Graham, Graham Wesley. Everything was great, everything was good. He was healthy, perfectly well. Doctor visits were great. Everything was progressing well. Well, my wife left one week to go to Switzerland for a business trip. And during that week, uh, our son slept in his room like he does every night. He slept in the crib. I had the monitor, everything set up, watching him pretty closely. Everything was great. He was a great sleeper. I never heard anything, never woke up. Um, got up in the morning, got dressed, ready for work, went into his room. and said, all right, Graham, let's go. It's time to go. Take him to daycare, get the day started. I looked in the crib and he wasn't moving, he wasn't responding. And so I looked at him and realized really quickly he wasn't breathing. So I grabbed him, shook him a little bit and said, Graham, wake up, wake up. And he wasn't responding, so I picked him up, put him over my shoulder, grabbed him, went in the car, ran to the emergency room, gave him to the nurses and the doctors, and tears streaming down my face. I said, can you help me? My son isn't breathing. I said, can you please take him? Help him breathe, help him breathe. They grabbed him, started doing all the CPR, all the stuff that they do as medical professionals. And I'm sitting in the corner crying out to God, God, help me, come. Let him breathe, let him breathe. Wake up, wake up. And all the screaming and yelling from me and the doctors and went on for about 15 minutes. They told me that he didn't make it. He wasn't alive. And I fell apart there in the hospital room. I fell apart with myself, basically, and my son. I realized that I was coming to terms now with a new reality, that our son had passed away. Not only that, I had to let my wife know who was in Switzerland, who was gone on business that week. Call her and let her know the news. Uh, at that time, I was surrounded by some friends and my pastor and others around me at that time, but I called my wife and let her know. We both kind of fell apart over the phone and let her know that she needed to come home. The next three days, she's trying to get home. I'm trying to plan a funeral and get everything together, try to walk this out in our new normal, new situation. But. Well, um, like Jesse said, you know, walking through all this has been, it's been a it's been hard and it's been good at the same time. And I think that when you have a living and active God who's working for you and doing work in you, um, you still grieve, but it's a different kind of grief. And it says in the Bible that we grieve with the, like those who have a hope. And so as we've been grieving together, we've also been grabbing onto God's presence and to that hope that He has given us that, you know what, maybe this isn't the picture that we thought our lives would be. We didn't think it would be this way. But, you know, we've had people come up to us and say, you know, because of your testimony, because of Graham's testimony, I started coming back to church. Or seeing you guys walk through this with that hope has uh, turned my life in some way more to God than I was before. And so, to me, that's something that only God can do because even just the circumstances of us being apart and, you know, I was out of town and Jesse was home alone. I mean, you put, you can almost, you can almost put that in the news and say, how would that wife feel or how would that husband feel? How would that wife feel coming home from uh, being away? And you know the voices that would come at you and say, oh, it was their fault. You know, they should have, they should have, watched more or whatever but the fact that we haven't had to deal with any of that that wasn't even a thought the first thing that that we said or that I said when I was on the phone with him I said this is not your fault I'm coming home and we're gonna we're gonna deal with this together as a couple and so 
even in the midst of tragedy and hard circumstances and walking through things that you really, you should never have to walk through. God has been so faithful and so good and so kind to us. And the fact that we have been able to give that to other people as a lifeline and a hope for them has been amazing to us. And it, it is only because God is who He is. It's only because He's good. It's only because He's been faithful. It's only because we've wanted to be that to other people. And that's where that's where we got we got almost like a renewed sense of hope, even walking through grief, because we're like, if God can come at a time like this for us, He can do it for anyone. And it's not only grief, it's, it's whatever they're walking through, whatever trauma they've been through. And it is only a holy God. Only our good God can do that. And that's what we've experienced walking this out together. I did call her, I said one of the first things she said over the phone was that um, she said, we don't know, Jesus, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. It was such a hopeful statement to me at that time. We both kind of cried it out for a while. But that's kind of been our journey the past two years of walking this out of grief and loss and tragedy, realizing what we need to do, but we don't know what to do, but our eyes have been on Jesus together as we walk this out. So. Yeah. After Graham passed away, uh, I not only had to let my wife know, I had to let my family know, because they were all in another state. And so I called each of them and let them know that Graham had passed away. And one of them is my brother, Jamie, who is a drummer for Dustin Smith. And Jamie knew, and he, so he called Dustin and let him know. And so, Dustin, I found out later, was recording in his studio at that time when they found out. And I guess Dustin kind of fell apart and they asked him what was going on and they told him about knowing us and our son had passed away that morning. And so they all decided to sit down together and wrote a couple songs for us, just in the moment, just to lift us up in prayer and be with us from another state. And so he told us the story, they, they, they all wrote the song and he came and, uh, my son Graham loved Dawson Smith so much that he always wanted to listen to his music. And so we specifically asked if he would come play at our funeral, at the funeral, uh, one last time so he could hear Dustin's songs. And uh, so he came and he brought the songs with him, two of them. And he sat us down and told us the story of each of them and said that, you know, you can pick one, I'll play one at your funeral if you want, you know, it's up to you. And so I told him, you know, I, I think I want to hear this one now at the funeral. And he sang it. And he said, I want to hear this one. I believe this one I'm going to need later in life. And that song was, I Belong to You. And so I Belong to You came out a few months ago. I heard it for the first time again on the radio or something sometime. And I realized it hit me all of a sudden. I had said those words that I'm going to need that song later. I fell apart listening to the lyrics again. So I remember the story of how it was written, where it came from. The songs say the enemy can't take what I have. So our son may be gone, but he hasn't taken our hope. He hasn't taken our joy. He hasn't taken what he wanted to. Maybe my son may be gone. Our lives may be different, but we serve a good God. He hasn't taken everything. We've been able to walk this out and walk those words because we belong to Him, because we belong to a holy God who has saved us. The enemy hasn't taken what he wanted to. He hasn't taken our hearts. He hasn't taken our loyalty. He hasn't taken our joy and our strength that we still get to walk this out. God has come in those depths. That verse it says, deep calls out to deep and the roar of your waterfalls. And God has brought the waterfalls of His grace and His love and His, his comfort, to me especially, and the depth of that, and then He's filled those depths, He's filled those pain. It's not that we don't hurt anymore, that we have days where we miss Him and walk through it and have moments of sadness as we still walk into an empty bedroom sometimes, but the waves have not overtaken us. We've been able to walk through the fire 
not smell like smoke. We've been able to come out on the other side and do this together. And so God has truly guarded us and covered us and protected us in this journey and walked with us and been with us. And it's given us hope and a future and a life that we never asked for the situation or the circumstances, but he's given us more than we've needed and he's always been there for us. Now we have an opportunity that I belong to you to sing the song and I get to sing it with a little extra fight inside of me, a little push, kind of push it back at him and say, you know, I do belong to you, God, and you have given us the victory in this and you have given us the life in this because we do belong to you. So one of our favorite art song of ours personal to us because of the story, but we do belong to him. Now he's giving us a future, we're trying for kids again at this point, and uh, walking in this next journey of our lives, the next journey of our hope, and next journey of our future together. So we're expecting God to do big things for us, give us blessings, and as we continue to be a blessing and tell our story and tell others and let others know that, you know, there is hope, there is life, there's something to grab on to in the midst of tragedy, there's something that you can hold, there's something tangible that you can grab on to whenever something hard comes your way, whenever life tragedy comes your way, there's someone you can reach out to, there's someone you can grab on to, and let me tell you who he is, let me tell you what he can do for you, let, him tell, let me tell you what he's done for us, and what he's done in our lives, and how he's come, and how he's changed us, so he's come, so only a holy God has filled that. Only a God that can overcome that darkness has filled us with everything he has. So. Who can redeem your life after a trauma or tragedy? Only a holy God. Who else can bring hope and life after the loss of a child? Only a holy God. Joy with heaven sing.